Hello. Today I'm going to talk about building a digital twin for a nuclear power plant. What I mean by this is how to build the data you need to run a safe, efficient and reliable nuclear power plant. How am I qualified to talk about this? Well, in my 35 years working in the industry, I have delivered asset management and information management systems at 16 nuclear plants, including both operational and decommissioning plants. And I have also been involved in delivering information services to three new build plants at Sizal B, EDF's new station at Hinkley Point C, and the now suspended Horizon Nuclear Project at Wilver Newid in North Wales. However, before I start, as in all good nuclear presentations, we are going to have a safety moment first. So, remember to use the handrail going down or upstairs. And if there isn't a handrail, then tell your management. More thoughts about safety can be got through my booklet, The Cartoon Guide to Nuclear Safety, available on Amazon. Back to our topic for today. How to build a digital twin for a nuclear power plant. Or, how to build the data to run a safe, effective and efficient nuclear power plant. This is not easy. I'm going to use this diagram to illustrate the difficulties involved. Let's first of all examine the life cycle of a nuclear plant. It's a simplified diagram that highlights the major data areas that will make up the nuclear station. Let's start with an operating plant. The major elements are in operations, maintenance and engineering. And there are business elements that need to be considered as well. The life cycle before operations can be characterised by the EPC or engineering, which I will call design, procure and construct life cycle. But I will add two more elements of manufacture and commissioning. Commissioning often being a joint effort with the operations group. Depending on the country and the regulatory regime involved, there will also be a set of requirements that must be met by the design and build process. And a licensing and regulatory arrangement, which again depends on the country in which the station is being built. After the end of operations, we move into decommissioning, consisting broadly of defueling, deplanting, a period of care and maintenance of the site before final site clearance. This is a long term life cycle. The operational life of the station may be 60 or more years. The build process can take seven to 10 or even more years. Even the period before the EPC phase to gather the necessary approvals, government approvals and funding can take many, many years. And the decommissioning process itself, depending on how it is done, may take a hundred years. But when it comes to building our complete data model for our digital plant, we realize that each of these different elements are often run by different organizations, different companies, each with their own computer systems, their own culture and incentives, which make data sharing and building our nuclear twin difficult. Let's take, for example, the procurement or manufacture of parts. Ideally, when we buy a valve, say, from a supplier, we want to also buy all the data associated with that valve in such a way that it can be used in our operational computer systems. So we want all the dimensions, how it works under certain conditions, failure types, recommended spares, maintenance instructions, etc. At best, we will get this information in the form of documents, a PDF data sheet, an O&M manual, operations and maintenance manual. Sometimes the PDF is even supplied in a scanned image format that is not easily copied, pasted into our systems. Why is this? Because the operators and maintainers are not involved in the purchase and there is reluctance among suppliers to provide the information in data rather than document form. An extreme situation can occur in a nuclear new build situation where the EPC organisation hands over hundreds of thousands of components to the operating organisation. 
together with hundreds of thousands of documents. This seems stupid, but I know of several new nuclear build projects where the operating organisation is re-keying information from the designer, the manufacturer, constructors, suppliers to get the data they need. This is happening today. I summed it up by producing this short video. So, I have indicated the problems involved in bringing data from many different sources, which will enable us to build the digital twin. It is important to get the cooperation between suppliers and consumers of data. There should be a supply chain of data written into all contracts and agreements. I could talk for a long time on the issue of data-centric configuration management, and perhaps I will do in a future video. However, there are two other facets of this issue. Firstly, we must define what data is needed in each component of the life cycle. Suppliers of data must be told what data is needed. And secondly, we have to address the issue of interoperability. How data can flow between IT systems and companies. So let's look at how we specify the data we need. To do this, I'm going to concentrate on an operational power station and the data it needs to operate in a safe, efficient and effective manner. In a later video, perhaps, I'll look at the data needed to build a nuclear power station or to decommission one, if people want to see that, of course. In order to understand the data required for an operational power station, we need to firstly understand how an operational power station works. Let's use this diagram. This diagram is a map of all the functionality that IT systems need to cover in an operational power station. No one system can cover all of this, so there will inevitably be data integration between the systems. I have split this functionality into organisational groups. Your own organisation may be different, but the building blocks will be the same. Let's look around this diagram. Each block and line on this diagram can be expanded. This is only an overview of functionality. Each element of the diagram will be supported by its own processes, procedures, organisation, roles, responsibility, people, training, IT functionality and data. But the point I make is that the data or the digital twin to support all of these functions must be integrated. Over here, are the functions associated with maintenance. I'm not going to go through each element of this diagram, it would take too long. If you want, you can pause the video or take some screenshots, but I'll highlight some areas as we go along. I dealt briefly with maintenance strategy in another video on asset management that you'll find on my channel. Over here, and very much associated with maintenance management, is the work management functionality, associated with outage management or online management, sometimes called work week management or e-execution week management, and schedule adherence. Let's look up here at operational functions. And here I want to quickly flip to another diagram, which indicates the relationship between two major concepts, that of information technology and operational technology. Operational technology, OT, is a fairly new term for an old concept in the nuclear industry. 
The term has arisen in recent years due to industrial components such as pumps, valves, motors, tanks being manufactured and fitted with hardware and software to monitor and control their state. Measurements such as flow, temperature, vibrations, etc. The growth of the Internet of Things, IoT, means a greater ability to wirelessly and non-wirelessly react to circumstances, detect faults and intervene more quickly. This does, however, cause the nuclear industry and information cyber security difficulty. Let me bring in another diagram. In a nuclear power plant, the CNI system controls the plant parameters within normal limits and advises the operators of plant status and to raise alarms when normal parameter ranges are exceeded. Data needs to flow from the instruments to the parts of the asset management IT suite looking at performance, condition monitoring, equipment reliability, systems health and to trigger, where necessary, corrective or preventative maintenance or inspection. Let's now return to the main diagram and continue our tour. Up here in technical and safety support, we have the specialist areas of health physics, regulatory assurance, chemistry, nuclear safety, industrial safety and continuous improvement. Over here is engineering. Hidden in this section is engineering design change management. As I have said before, these are only titles and the IT systems to support these areas can be substantial. Over on the right hand side we have business support, document management, supply chain, business management, risk management, trading, security and other areas including down here managing the people assets. As I, as I have said, if you want, you can pause and screenshot this video if you want more detail. But there is a vast amount of information below these titles. Some related ideas to the topic I'm exploring today can be found in my booklet, Enterprise Asset Management for Beginners. It's available on Amazon and it's very cheap. I recommend you buy it. So, we have stated that in order to build our digital model, we have to know our business, and we have to know it from a data point of view. This is not easy. Most analysts will look at how an organisation works from a process point of view, and others from a people or organisational viewpoint. Computer IT people will look at things from a systems point of view, but we need to look at things quite differently from a data point of view. To understand data, you must start by understanding the process. This diagram is just a sample process. Actually, it's a high-level process of how to build a nuclear power station from a data point of view. But in this context, it is just illustrative of how a process needs to be broken down in your organisation. This example uses swim lanes to represent different organisational groups. Your own methodology may be different. For each process and sub-process, we need to understand the process and how it uses data, where it gets that data from and what data it generates that may be used by others. The methodology for developing the data model can be shown in this diagram. We firstly have to identify the need for data. As we have mentioned several times before, this can only be done by understanding fully how your business works maybe by documenting the processes within the organisation. Once we have identified the need for data, then we have to identify where to get this data. Perhaps it's from within your organisation, or maybe it's from manufacturer's data. We then need to get the data. Is this a one-off data collection, or do we have to set up a regular data integration with the source? We then need to store the data in some computer system, we need to report on it and we may need to share it. Finally, we may need to identify who our data customers are. Other processes or parts of the business may need this data and the cycle continues. Having set up these major elements, you can map the particular building blocks for your own organisation. Down here we have supporting functions that are key. Information governance, data ownership, 
There is a lot of boring literature on this, and I'm not going to get into it, but some consultants will convince you that it's necessary. But I can't get too excited about it. But much more important is this development of the data dictionary, which is part of the data model that describes everything and, more importantly, describes how data is related and how we can set up sharing and interactions with data. This is a big topic, and I'll briefly mention it again later in this video. Let me now talk about building a data dictionary. Wouldn't it be nice if there were standards around the data that we need to build a nuclear power station, providing a structure of what data is needed and why and where and when we could get it? A number of organisations have tried to achieve standards, including ISO initiatives, ISO 14224, ISO 15926, the Capital Facilities Information Handover Specification, which is mainly an oil and gas initiative, the construction industry have developed the Co Construction Operations Building Information Exchange, COBE, as part of the PAS 1192 Building Information Management, BIM, initiative. And specific nuclear data initiatives include the Plant Information Models, PIM, developed by EPRI and later by the IAEA. The AP1000 Standard Utility Data Specification, SUDS, is another US initiative. And I myself have extensive knowledge of the data needed to operate nuclear power stations in the UK, and I have other details from nuclear plant in the US industry. Each of these initiatives have merit and can provide input for components such as valves, pumps, motors, lifts, tanks, heat exchangers, etc as well as structural items such as pipework, walls, doors, floors, steelwork. And each has a list of attributes that may or may not be required or indeed available. It's a heavy job, but hopefully this video has given you some pointers on how to do it. I'm going to sign off now. If you want any more information, then you could always get in touch or hire me. Goodbye.